It's a, a people, it's a community, it's a life, it's a heart, it's a spirit. Parents of gay children say, I want my son, my gay son, to have the same opportunity to come to me and say, hey dad, I'm getting married, as my non-gay son or my non-gay daughter. What the heck would you want a picture of a tattoo of a thousand dollars on your penis for? Just... You might just need to satisfy yourself sexually alone at that point. Do I regret it? Not one bit. Did I think that I would actually take it the next step and, and do it again? Uh, uh, you know. <laughs> and what goes into their life, how they handle it. There are 12 houses, and each one of those houses has a particular function. Look into yourself, think about it, and just be whoever it is that speaks to you. Hello, and welcome to Talking About. I'm your host, John Griffith, and today I am on location in the wonderful borough of Manhattan, and it's rare that a band just jumps out and wins you over in a heartbeat. And tonight I am fortunate enough to interview such a band. That band is Cersei. And, well, why don't I just get right down to it and going to talk to the members of the band. And I'll start right here and I'll let you introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Andres, and I play guitar. Okay, and? My name's Gregory Ness, I play the drums for the group. And? Hi, I'm Melanie, I'm uh, the singer, and I play the flute. Okay, and you are? My name is Ricardo, donde esta el oro? <laughs> okay, no hemming it up. Save that for your act. Okay, um, how did Cersei come to be? Uh, well, the three of us have been playing together for about five years. Andres joined the band about two years ago. Um, and we actually, the two of us were in, in and out of just side projects. And we started writing music together, decided that this is what we wanted to do. And Greg joined the band through an ad that we put in a local paper. We're from upstate New York, so he joined the band from that. And Andres actually is from Argentina. And he joined the band through an ad we placed in the Village Voice. Okay, so we're going to have to address that right now. So, um, okay, so you, you get the Village Voice at home back back uh, in Argentina? No, no, no. I came here uh, and I was living here for like two, three years, and I usually picked up uh, pick up the the Village Voice. I used to pick it up to look for a, a band, and I found the guys. And um, I start traveling down and up from the city. And uh, we uh, tour all the East Coast together, so we had a lot of fun. Okay, um, just was it sort of an instant? Did it click instantly, or did it take a little while? No, it took. Uh, sometimes it's a little uh, difficult how like the culture is a little different, but I learn a lot from uh, them, and they learn a lot from me, I guess. And we click musically, yes. Okay, great. And yourself, I mean, you're, I'm hoping that you've given up scouring the ads. Yes, I have. I still look just for kicks to see what's happening. But I was going through ads once a week and just calling three or four every week and just leaving messages and usually not getting people to, to call me back or write me back. And uh, luckily they were professional and did. And at the point where I did speak with them, I was still a little disillusioned, but upon rehearsing, I was greatly surprised to see how hard they worked and how talented they were. So I was happy to get the gig. Okay. And, um, well, how long have you been together uh, all in all? Uh, well, the, the three of us were for five years and with Andres for like two years. So, yeah. Okay, and is, is Cersei still evolving in that area as far as, as, as a group? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that we grow every time we record a new CD, so we're, we're always changing, you know, our sound changes from CD to CD, so, you know. Okay, and uh, well, how many CDs have you produced already? Uh, we have three studio albums and um, some live stuff, and actually uh, we just recently, well, Rich is actually the mastermind behind this plan but 
we came up with a new live program called BYOB, which actually stands for Build Your Own Bootleg. And we record the live shows and we put them up on the site and people can pick live tracks and make their own live Cersei CD however they want. And all the proceeds go towards recording new albums. So it's kind of a, an in-house effort to just keep the recording and writing process going and the fans seem to get a kick out of it. So. Yeah, I mean, actually that's something that I really haven't seen anywhere else that seems unique to your own group. Would you say that's the case? I think so, yeah. We're pretty much geniuses. So uh, <laughs> I think, I, I don't know too many, I don't know of any other band that's doing it. So We can't play a lick, but we do a lot of marketing. <laughs> okay, well, no, I, can, I can say for a fact that that's not true because, like I said earlier, you won me over the first time I saw you. Not just musically, but just in general. Uh, well, we we would like to get that elusive uh, record deal, um, but not in the sense of a major label deal. I don't think that that's really a good home for us. Uh, we're not trying to be that whole mass marketed product, and um, I don't think that we have what they're looking for, and I don't think that they have what we're looking for, at least in our experience so far with the industry. Um, so we're 
I think we're looking more towards like an indie thing where they would actually nurture our uh, creative process a little bit more and let us be ourselves a little bit more. And what we'd really like to do with that is just get some more radio play out of it and tour nationally. Right now we tour the East Coast, but finances make it difficult to get much beyond that. So. Yeah, well, I mean, from, from what I've read and from what you told me off camera, you, you do manage to tour just a little bit. Yeah, we, do, we play more than 250 shows a year, so we're constantly touring nonstop. Melanie, if someone wants to come see us, wh how can they find out where and when we're playing? Thanks for asking, Rich. You just go to our website, www.circy.com. And, and, you know, we did not plant that question at all. We did not. Um, okay, what? In addition to the um, BYOB, what can other what can people find on your website as well? Rich, you're the webmaster. There's, there's a lot of stuff on the website. There's uh, obviously millions and millions of pictures. There's video clips of uh, you know different shows we've done, different press coverage that we've gotten. Uh, there's extensive bios about all of us, including our favorite. Movies, our favorite food, all kinds of crazy stuff like that. Uh, there's, of course, those those uh, tour dates of uh, when and where we're playing. There's uh, what else we got? We have a lot of. We try to do a lot of things to make it interesting for the fans to come back. We have a message board. Obviously, a lot of bands have that. We also have a thing called uh, Cersei Fans Around the World, in which we have fans who, you know, just through the internet, we've met literally all over the world. We have. Uh, you know, some people in Brazil, and there's some people in England, and uh, there's some fans in Japan and stuff of the band, uh, some of which we met here, and some of which just, just on the web. And we, we tried to get them to, of course, order merchandise, and then wear it, you know, uh, at, you know in front of a, a local place. Like, we, we just got a picture from somebody uh, with a Cersei shirt at the Eiffel Tower, um, and we had someone from the, uh, the Patronus Towers. Uh, where is that? In Singapore? I don't know where that is. In Malaysia, um, and then we put a picture and, and where they're up on the website. So it's kind of fun for uh, for fans just to get involved a little bit with the website and that kind of thing. What else is on the site? Well, in addition to the live clips, can people sample more of your music? Then, absolutely. There's free uh, there's free video and there's free um, audio on the uh, on the multimedia page and tons of photos. So, yeah, lots of fun stuff to check out. That's free. Oh, yeah. What is the most odd or unique fan experience that you've had? Oh, wow. Where is Guario? There are so, so many. Um, guys? We had someone um, claim that we restored his site. I'm supposed to have an apartment about a block that way for about 300 a month. We had a fan who was blind, and he, his sight came back, and we were on TV. So he attributes his regaining of his sight to Cersei. He'd sneak out of the hospital in full gown and wristband and take cabs to our shows. Right? That's kind of odd. Yeah, it's kind of odd. Yeah, got a lot of them. <laughs> so would you recommend your music to restore people's sight? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot endorse such things. It, it will... Proved yet. It FBI. will increase your sexual attractiveness 33%, though. That's true. That's a true statement. <laughs> what else? I mean, we've had, we've had some, we've had some strange, I and mean, some of them are just so bizarre. I don't know if I can say them all, but I mean, we had. A, I think there was one gig in particular where we felt more like we were, uh, we were being social workers as opposed to being in a band. We, we thought maybe we were near a bus stop. <laughs> Or something. You can't we were playing. Say that. We were playing. It's all. These are all very loving, warm people who are fans of ours, and I think they themselves embrace their own uniqueness and strangeness. One of which is this fellow whose sight was restored happened to be at this show. I think he was having a relapse. It's not funny, but I think he was having a relapse uh, with his vision, and uh, he can see now. He, so he it's can all see right. now. Yeah. So he was just kind of sitting there, calling out my name in an odd fashion. And he was there at the same time as uh, another fan of ours who everything he says is at the loudest volume you can imagine. Like, he would come up to me and he would say, I love you guys! You guys are awesome! Like, you just start yelling everything he says. And he, he was there at the same time as well as this other fellow who for some reason was carrying around $32,000 in cash. I have no idea why. 
<laughs> I don't think I can say anything else really about what his problems are because they're of a sexual nature. Uh, okay, uh, for uh, possible services rendered, maybe? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure. He's, he's an odd fellow, an odd fellow. His, uh, I believe his stripper name is Big Papa Pump. <laughs> I will not ask you how you know that. Uh, he likes to he's tell me. He's very open. Tell me about it, yeah. Lots of devoted fans that will follow us virtually anywhere. If we're doing a show 12 hours away, all of a sudden we'll look out in the audience and we'll see three or four familiar faces that just happen to decide to make the trip with us. And it's, it's almost to the point where you see them so much you forget that you're 12 hours from home. You just kind of walk by and go, hey, what's going on, Joe? And then you realize they drove here for, you know, the long trip and made it out. Yeah, that's... that's... We got some dedicated folk. So is that um, fulfilling in its own right that people are so dedicated? Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the best compliments that you can get is that your music touches people and we are really fortunate to hear that from fans all the time and that's amazing so yeah
you rather have? Um, one year as a megastar or 15 years as a working artist? Well, unfortunately, if you have the one year as the megastar, and if you're if you're dedicated and you're smart, that's enough to make a, to make a whole career out of, you know. And that's, I mean, you might not you might not be the it band, you know, for the for the rest of your life, but you can at least if you have your name out there, then you can do. Like we want to be able to play in you know small venues all across the country. And right now we can't really do that because like we can't go play someplace in Nevada that no one's ever heard of us. But if we had some big huge mega hit and everyone knew the name, then when we were playing in their in their local town, they'd be like, oh, you know, I know them. You might be able to draw a few hundred people. And to us, I mean, that would be that would be a that's a great great goal. Yeah. I mean, we're gonna do it for 15 years either way, <laughs> whether we have the big mega hit or not. But you know, everyone also says, you know, you don't want to be signed to a big label because then you might get swept under the carpet and uh, you might end up wasting some time. And, and unless you are incredibly successful, you'll be making less money and uh, it'll be much more of a struggle. But for some reason, it's kind of like a, a barometer of success if you're actually signed, you know. Even though we're doing all the same things that we would be doing if we were signed to a big label and that's you know, writing the music and helping to, to produce it and market it and, and playing shows to promote it, but it seems like less of a success because we have to do it ourselves, but I don't know, maybe that makes us stronger, I don't, I don't know. I feel like we're more of a success because we do it ourselves. I feel fulfilled in that, because no one tells us what to do. I like that. Thank you. 
have you been without a major label behind you? I think we've been, I think we've been pretty successful so far. Um, let that go. <laughs> And I think that uh, I think that's part of the reason why we wouldn't really want to give up the whole creative control that we have because we've experienced that, and so uh, and we've been able to do it on some level ourselves. And it's really rewarding when it's really rewarding when you do it yourself and you can see your efforts. You know, we've we've sold um, I can't remember the stat now, but it, it's like eighteen or nineteen thousand CDs on our own. So that's not too shabby. For no, a big, big band like us. So, okay, let's get everyone together again, and that website one more time all together. That is www.cersei.com. And again, there's a link to that on the talkingabout.info website. I'm John Griffith, and thank you very much. And I will see you next time.